Okay. Guess we're going to do some smelting. Again, sorry for the traffic. And hopefully I don't run out of propane before we get this stuff hot. And while y'all are watching stuff melt, I'm gonna go see if I can find my coffee. Found my coffee. So this might be a little bit of a drawn out one, but uh, again, I don't do edited videos, so y'all get to see start to finish what everything entails. So again, hope we don't run out of propane because I used that to heat the shop in this last little cold snap and hopefully we've got enough to smelt this. But that block on top, I'd already had 50 pounds in the pot. The block weighs 35 pounds, so it's going to be 85 pounds of lead in this pot. Also, as you can see, the block's been laying out in the yard in the weather. It's got some dirt on it, so we'll get into that when we do the fluxing. But in the meantime, if you get bored, while well, I go try to find my spoon, you can always fast forward, or you can just watch it melt. And had to get the blowtorch, which you'll see why here in a few minutes. If my camera battery doesn't run dead, or my propane doesn't run out first.
In the meantime, guess I might as well grab a chair. Okay, have my coffee. Have my chair. Have my knife. Have my candle wax. So yes, I did find a good use for the turkey fryer. Uh, most of y'all probably aren't going to use a good turkey fryer to smelt lead. Most of you probably aren't going to smelt 80 to 100 pounds at a time either. So a good camp stove and just a small pot works really good for this. The reason I do it in such large batches is because I cast so many bullets. And this keeps the lead mix. And sorry, folks around here don't know what a muffler is. Uh, by smelting the larger batches, that keeps my mixture consistent from lot to lot on molding, casting, and loading. But small batches work just as good too. And I'm probably going to double flux this because there is dirt and other stuff on my lead. So I'll do a twice in this pot flux. When we get into the casting part, I always flux it in the lead pot also because this is not going to be pure lead we're going to have a slight bit of antimony and the flux will actually not only will it take all the dross the trash and all that stuff out of the lead dirt sand grime that kind of stuff which you do not want to cast bullet going down your barrel uh, it will also mix the antimony parts back into the lead so fluxing is going to one clean to mix everything back in. And now she's melting. Boy, I hope I don't run out of propane on this one. Again, nice Coleman camp stove, works great for this. There she goes. So now I generally, as we talked about in the other vids, I like to flux my lead at around 800 degrees. Uh, your lead's gonna melt about 622 degrees, thereabouts but I like to flux it hot. That way, if you have a tin mixture in it, that's gonna get your tin nice and hot. Uh, if you're running any kind of antimony, that's gonna keep it nice and hot. And also, when you flux it hot, it tends to get the trash out a lot easier. And also remember, when you're doing this, and you can see a little bit of bubbling, now, well, again, sorry for the crappy camera, plus the lights shining off of it. But on this side, you can see some bubbling. There is some moisture in that lead ingot because it's been sitting outside, which I don't recommend leaving, but that's where it was and that's what I had. Remember, anytime you get moisture in that lead mix, or especially if you start adding lead to the pot, if you have any kind of moisture in it, that's gonna instantly turn to steam and it's going to splatter. And when you're doing this, and as you notice today, as in the other ones I've done, you know, I'm in a t-shirt. But I recommend a good, heavy, long sleeve shirt or jacket in case you get a splatter. You generally always want to wear a face shield. Also, as you'll see when I get ready to put the ladle in there, 
you tend to get moisture or lube and a number of other things will actually get in the pores of your metal spoons or your metal ladles and then when you go to put the ladle in it splatters I am wearing safety glasses I don't have a full face shield on it got broken but I got talked into going ahead and doing the video today so I'm going to do it with just glasses on and hope for the best again one of those do as I say not as I do things And now that has melted. Well, since it is still bubbling, I really don't want to mess with it while it's got bubbles coming up because that means there is some moisture in it. So I'm going to keep my head back here and just let that cook out. Also, I'm waiting on that to cook out. I'm going to go get another cup of coffee. And she's still bubbling a little bit, so. I do not have a lead thermometer, so. I've done this long enough, you know, after 42 years of this, you can kind of, you know, guesstimate what your temp's at and everything. But if you're gonna start out and you really wanna get into this, good lead thermometers, probably worth the price. They're not exactly cheap, 40 to $60. But if you do it a lot, you know, it's probably worth it. Okay, I'm gonna turn that down just a hair. Seems how I am running low on propane. Once it melts, that's gonna stay hot for a long time. And it's kinda like boiling water. You know, once you get it to boiling, you can turn your heat down and it'll keep boiling. Because once it comes up to temp, it takes less heat to keep it up to temp. Again, for those of you that are bored, we're what? Almost 14 minutes into it, and we're just now getting the melt going. That's what fast forward's for. So, I'm gonna go ahead and set my torch. And as I said, you'll see when we get ready to flux it here what the torch is for. You don't have to have a torch. Or a lighter, or a match. It just tends to save some arm hair. Because I'm going to be fluxing with straight paraffin, you know, kitchen paraffin, gulf wax, candle wax. Normally I would use bullet lube for this. but I have some paraffin and I'm not gonna go dig out my bullet lube. Also, I do not have my spoon. I generally use just the metal kitchen spoon like soup spoon, the big ones. But it seems to have grown legs and walked off so I'm gonna try to dross it with the label. Again, it's going to get fluxed again once it's in the pot. So if I leave a little trash in it, it's really not going to hurt that much. And we're almost ready. So, uh, again, the reason for the torch or nice grill lighter, candle lighter, you know, something you don't have to, not a big lighter, we're going to stick your fingers down there. The flux, whatever you use for flux, whether it's paraffin or bullet wax or whatever, at the temperature this is going to be when we go to flux it, 
the wax is going to fume and then those fumes will ignite. If you light the fumes after you put the wax in, you know exactly when it's going to flame. Again, you don't have to, but if you know when it's coming, you're going to save some arm hair. And yeah, that's a lot of lead for one batch. Okay, so I'm going to stir it once before I get ready to flux it. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I go to put the ladle in. That's a dry ladle. It's been stored dry. But from the last batch that we did, good chance, and especially if you're using like cast iron ladles or cast iron lead casting spoons, the cast iron pours will hold moisture, lube, that kind of stuff in. So when you put it in, you want to ease it in slowly and let it heat as you put it in. Otherwise, if you just stick it in, it's going to splatter. I'm also keeping my head back since I don't have a face mask on. Uh, I can feel it sizzling. Don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's sizzling. It's popping a little. Okay. So also, when you put your spoon, preferably if you're using one, once it gets heated up, the lead won't stick to it, as you can see. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. And also, the clips that were on the piece, that's all floated to the top. I will do another one of these with the wheel weights. And where we're talking about, don't worry about cutting your clips and all that stuff. Throw the wheel weights in there and mix it. They're going to float to the top, and it's going to come off. And you also want to keep a dross pan, or slag pan, to put your crap in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skim off what's on there before I flux it. Keeping me head out of the way. Again, this is easier with a spoon than a ladle, but it's what I got. And simply tip it up, pour the lead out, and you're left with just the dross and the slag. I guess I can move this camera over and maybe get a better shot. But if you can maybe see, probably not because this is going to be mirror shiny, but when you get this kind of thick looking on top, that's generally going to be your antimony or whatever other metals you have mixed in. So what that tells me is this is not quite hot enough. So let's turn it up again. And this shouldn't take but just a minute or two to get that heat. Again, I'm 47. I've been doing this since I was five years old. So 42 years experience, you know. I really don't need a thermometer. But most of y'all will probably want to, as I said, invest in a thermometer. Uh, those of you wanting to use infrareds, uh, the point and shoot thermometers, does not work on this because that's a mirrored surface. It will not read. What you can do if you're using a cast iron pot as such, you can shoot the pot and get a temperature off the pot because whatever the outside of the pot is the inside of the pot's going to be so that's one thing you can do
and I'm also not going to get through this pot, pouring ingots. Uh, if you're going to be doing lots of lead smelting or large batches, I would recommend getting two separate ingot molds because what happens is after the first two or three pours of your ingots, your mold heats up so much that even after you pour it into the mold, set it down, it's going to take a while for that to cool. So if you have two sets of molds, you can dump one while it's cooling, fill the other. Or you can just sit around and wait for it to cool. Again, most of you are probably going to do, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds at a time. So it's really not going to make that much of a difference. Okay, I'm starting to get a little melt look to it. Turned up just a hair. Guys, again, when I flux, I tend to flux hot. Also, that's where your leather gloves, a nice canvas jacket, or you know, something with heavy long sleeves. I'm getting a little bubble there, so I better wait just a minute. But that keeps the splatters down. For those of you that don't know, when this lead does splatter, when it splatters, got a scar right there, but actually, no, that's the flaming marshmallow. Uh, that was my last lead scar. That's a bee sting. No, I'm not contagious with anything. But when lead splatters, when it hits the skin, it immediately solidifies. It cools that quick. But even though it solidifies immediately, it's still going to be about 600 degrees. So it just keeps burning, keeps burning, and keeps burning. So if you ever get lead splattered on you, I've actually seen lead splatters burn all the way to the bone. Again, protective gear, long sleeves, not cotton. Uh, you want something that's going to protect your arms, wear gloves. Okay, so I think we're about ready to get up to flux temp. And I'll show you what I'm going to use the torch for. And this is the same block of paraffin we were using to make the wax bullets out of. So I'm just going to cut me off a little piece here. That's take a whole lot. This is a big pot, so I'll throw a little more in. So. Now a lot of people will flux it with a match. You know, they'll just take a kitchen match, throw in there. Uh, wood smoke, but I tend to flux with wax. Right, so I've got some bubbles coming up. Normally I would also be wearing my respirator, but we got a little breeze here. Since I'm trying to talk on camera, I'm going to keep my head upwind and let it blow the smoke the other way. So, since I'm going to be on that side and not going to be able to talk very much, again, all we're going to do is throw the wax in there. I'm going to heat my spoon before I throw the wax in. Then I'm going to take the torch, light the paraffin fumes. That way it doesn't flash up all of a sudden. And I don't lose any arm here. All right, here we go. Also, keeping my head out the way in case it does splatter. And again, a spoon works much, much better, but I don't have one, so I'm also on the wrong way inside. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, this skim looking on top here, that is actually a layer of the other metals. Now you'll see when we flux it, that will mix back into the lid. And that's why I was saying by light to paraffin fumes. Otherwise, it'll flash up unbeknownst to you. 
and you'll lose some arm hair. So simply just stir what's on top in, and again, that'll mix everything back in. What that will do is that will reconstitute the different metals with the different melt temperatures back into the lead and uniform the mixture. Woo, that's hot. I know, turkey fire. So, as you see this on top, the oxidation, all that, this is going to bring any kind of trash because the lead is so heavy, sand, dirt, anything else will float to the top. So we simply round the pan. Again, much easier with a spoon. But once you get it over, just kind of get it up in your ladle. And I guess maybe I can move this. Nope, wrong side. And as you see, whatever you got in your spoon, if you just tip your spoon up, hold it against the side of your pan, let the lead run out, because the lead will run out and leave just to draw some trash. You should all skim it about twice. Again, if I had a spoon. camera back and here's our setup basically I've just got me an old saw blade but I put me a piece of aluminum foil down one pound ingot molds and I simply lay my aluminum foil down that way when I dump my ingots up keep them nice and clean all right so See if I can get this on camera. And we will fill the molds. Now your first couple of fills, they should solidify fairly quick. And again, this is a full pound. As you can see, you know, that one's a little bit runny, but as these molds heat up, it's going to take longer and longer for that to sit. Once you get gray, simply take your ingots, nice and pretty. Now, if you don't have a set of ingot molds, if you're doing small batches, uh, I used to use a... Uh, couple of metal measuring cups. Coffee can, um, if you want, if you have a bunch of, or you beer drinkers, beer cans, make sure they're clean and dry. Um, and you can pour it into, you know, tin cans. You don't want to get it too big, because as you'll see, that's another reason I like these one pound molds. Now the Lyman is simply four one pound ingots. The Lee molds, I believe those are like two one pounders and two half pounds or whatever, but it doesn't matter because you've got to have it small enough to when we go to put it in the casting pot. You don't want big giant chunks. And this is going to oxidize as it sets. Now that which of course, again, apologize for the camera quality. 